Hey guys, Chess back again and welcome to episode number 23 of Ultimate Team. Now uh, we're coming into this one on the back of the uh, the German squad builder. So uh, we're going to jump straight into our first game in Division 1 with that German team. Now we come up against this guy who's playing a 3-4-1-2 which is quite a, a sweaty formation to be completely honest. The uh, the 3-5-2 was the one that's overly uh, f popular this year, and uh, it's kind of a variation on that. So uh, one guy sat behind two very very pacey strikers. You've got Mario Goetze up top. Mario Goetze sat behind um, Marco Royce and an in form Diego Melito, who was an absolute beast. But uh, we took the early lead here through uh, Andre Scherer in the eighth minute. A lovely uh, lovely feat to get inside the box and then a tidy tidy finish underneath the keeper. But he came straight back at us, and how this went in, I will never know. But Schneider somehow manages to get through right in front of the keeper and then slots it underneath him. Literally two minutes after we'd gone 1-0 up. So that brought it back to 1-1. And uh, this, uh, I'm going to start this one off by saying Division 1 is hella sweaty. Absolutely horrifically sweaty. Like, obviously, throughout uh, the course of FIFA Ultimate Team so far this year, everyone who uh, you know uploads on a more regular basis on a daily basis and has got a lot further into a series by this point and has spent a lot of time in division 1 and ultimate team has been uh, bitching about how sweaty it can get at the highest level and obviously with the uh, EA taking out the single match uh, feature then uh, you know people are just it's absolutely I must win to stay up I must win to stay up I must win to stay up I'm going to I'm going to buy everybody that has 90 plus pace and I'm just going to run around the outside of everyone uh, and then I'm going to square it and then I'm going to win and everyone's just going to have to accept it and <laughs> everybody plays like that in division 1 and it's so unbelievably frustrating because I've Personally, I've never played that way. I always prefer, much prefer, to have a footballing side with players that don't necessarily have, you know, blistering pace, but are good on the ball and have a good pass and can, when required, put in a good finish. But uh, just our oh, division one so far has just been so unbelievably like butt clenched, frustrating. But I'm gonna try not to bitch about it too much because obviously I know you guys will have heard it from absolutely everyone else in the community already, and uh, you are probably full aware yourselves of uh, what the uh, what the top division is like. So uh, I'm not gonna dwell on it too much. But Scherler there with another tidy finish, and that brought it back to 4-3. But we do get a defeat from our first game in Division One with that German side. But you know the, they played quite well as a competitive side, so I decided to go with it again and again. A three-four-one-two formation with Aaron Lennon, Swansea Lamar, Danny Welbeck, uh, Theo Walcott, Gibral Ciso. So pace absolutely everywhere. So it was definitely going to be another, you know, backs to the walls defensive job just to make sure that you fill all the gaps at the back to make sure that you know he doesn't get in behind, so that you can try and catch him on the counter attack if he pushes too far forward. And it was it was a tough game actually. This guy was a lot better at the game uh, in a footballing sense. You know, he actually played football rather than uh, the previous guy who just kicked and ran. And uh, somehow we managed to get a penalty there. Bad Stuber stuck out a leg, and uh, Welbeck just kind of shrugged it off, lifted his leg around it. But um, ref gave a pen, and Cisse stepped up, and then Wiedenfeller, how is that for an unbelievable save? Tips it onto the post. And uh, he's able to catch it up on the rebound. The defender knocks it back to him. Technically, I think that may have been a pass back. But uh, obviously, pass back isn't in FIFA. So, thank the Lord that he didn't get another penalty straight away. But uh, somehow, that managed to stay nil-nil. And Wiedenfeller has been decent, actually. Uh, obviously, like I said, in the squad builder, Noyes, the goalkeeper of choice in uh, in Bundesliga. And also, Tim Visa Or maybe even Rene Adler. But um, Wiedenfeller is very... Uh, he's solid. He does make the odd mistake. But uh, he, he is very, very reliable. So... Uh, I'm quite happy with only spending about 1,800 coins on a goalkeeper for this team. And uh, here is where he took the lead. Cissé just out of nowhere. The ball rebounds to him off Danny Welbeck and my defender. And then an absolute rocket into that far top corner. Put him 1-0 up. And uh, I was fuming at this point, And it took until the 93rd minute for uh, me to be able to break beyond with Royce. And I thought I could square it. I could be an absolute tramp and ensure that we get the goal. But I thought, no, bollocks. I'm just going to absolutely smash it with Marco Royce, which is exactly what I did. And we were able to steal, absolutely steal, a one all draw in that game. Uh, he did dominate us in that game, to be completely fair. He was very, very good at the game. And uh, so we're going to come into the third one with... Uh, we're going to freshen things up. The uh, the German team was getting a little bit tired. So, uh, some of the players have really bad stamina, actually. Schurler and Farfan were quite uh, lackadaisical and getting you know very, very tired towards the end of the game. So we're going with the Serie A team. Who, uh, we've had three changes, actually, to the Serie A team. I have highlighted them a, a 
two or three videos ago. We haven't actually played with it yet. So we've got Boateng from Milan, uh, Abate from Milan, and Nocherino from Milan. So we kind of got a Milan-based left-hand side to the team. Now, obviously, Abate is a right-back, but I am playing him at left-back because he's got the pace to be able to cover his lack of positional ability. So it's not that much of an issue. Although, in the, uh, the opening 15 minutes to this game, I was... I don't know what I was doing. I may as well not have had the controller in my hand because he tore me apart. I just couldn't get near him. That inform Roo was ripping me from side to side. And then uh, Eto just, he's an absolute poacher, pounces on that rebound and uh, rifles it into the bottom corner with 3 0 down after 17 minutes. And I thought to myself, I'm actually sick of this. Like, I was raging so hard that I almost got to a point of like a, a Nirvana where I just became calm. I was like, no. No, I've had enough. I am I am not going to be shown up again and have another horrific performance. I'm actually going to play some football, prove to myself and prove to EA that you can actually compete by playing genuine football on FIFA in Division 1 and Ultimate Team. So that is what I tried to do. And uh, stood the ball up there with Boateng for uh, Cavani to win the ball in the air to put it back to 3-1 in the 20th minute. And uh, from this point on, where I hit that kind of just chilled out Nirvana level, almost as if I was some sort of Buddhist monk. I was like, no, done, finished, calm down, just play football, everything will be fine. And we played some absolutely phenomenal football to get ourselves back into this game. 20th minute Cavani, 22nd minute Palacios played through there. Cavani with a great turn to kind of show the defender one way to open up the space to slot it through the channel to Palacio. And then in the 45th minute, first half stoppage time, Mickley with those beautiful little feet of his twists away from the defender and then has the uh, the composure to be able to slot under the keeper into the back of the net. So 45 minutes in at half time, it's 3-3 after being 3-0 down after 17 minutes. And then second half, just more of the same. Kevin Prince here able to get himself on the score sheet. Thundering finish after uh, working his way inside off the left-hand side. I've been playing a lot with this team against friends, actually. Like Obviously, it's been quite a while we've, since we've had some substantial gameplay on uh, on Ultimate Team, we had the the one game live com and a couple of squad builders, so there's not been that much gameplay. So I haven't been able to play with these teams online, but I have actually played a lot against friends recently uh, with all of the teams that I've got. The, you know, the the Serie A, the Bundesliga, and the uh, La Liga teams. So uh, I am becoming more and more familiar with them. And Kevin Prince Boateng against friends hadn't been that effective. I was genuinely considering getting rid of him and bringing in maybe a, a Sebastian Giovinco or someone like that. But in this game, just he was at the pinnacle of his ability. Absolutely worth the... Uh, I can't even remember how much I paid for him. But however much it was, it was definitely worth it because he was on fire in this game. And Mickley here almost makes it 7-3 in the 76th minute, hitting the post. And then uh, 88 minutes in, coming towards the end of the game. Now Vida was able to pick the ball up off the defender and Palacio... Finesse shot round the finish. Round the finish? A finesse shot round the defender to make the finish into the bottom corner. Absolutely textbook. Just bend it. Whip it around the defender into that bottom corner. And after being 3-0 down after a quarter of an hour, we won 7-3. So, uh... That was, it kind of made everything worthwhile in my mind. I, uh, after the first two games, I was very, very depressed. I was like, oh my god. Like, I know I'm not the best at FIFA, but I was hoping to at least compete in Division 1. And uh, after losing one and drawing one, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna, this is just gonna be a complete embarrassment and everyone's gonna laugh at me and I'm gonna be horrific. But that, that 7 3 win's given me just that extra little bit of confidence that uh, I can actually compete in Division 1 and we might, well, hopefully we can stay up. Uh, whether we'll win a title this year, I don't even know whether it's mathematically, mathematically possible to win a title. Is it 7 points? Yeah, 7 games, 21 points. So uh, we will need to win 6. 18, yeah, maths, 18. If we win six of the remaining seven games, we will win the league and win the title. But I'm not entirely confident that's going to happen this time around. But I will continue with this kind of road to glory type series until we do win that Division 1 title. Whether it be with any of the teams we've got now or whether we sell everyone and build loads of different teams and end up having three or four different squad builders here or there and pack openings, etc. Then we'll have to wait and see. But um, hopefully this series will continue to do well for uh, the foreseeable future. And uh, hopefully you guys can... Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. I know it's not been the best with the uh, performances, but hopefully the last game did make up for some of the uh, lacklustre football earlier on in the episode. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do leave the video a like. We got a load of likes on the previous career mode episode, so that was absolutely fantastic. And uh, if we could do that again on this one, then I would be 
uh, forever indebted to your uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to do I'm rambling so much that uh, I'm not even making grammatical sense so thank you very much for watching guys I will see you in a couple of days with another career mode video